how tight should you squeeze the racket on the forehand Ugh. or even the serve or the backhand. We're going to talk about that in today's lesson because there's an epidemic in the tennis world of players squeezing too tight. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATP player, eager to help you get to the next level. And grip pressure is an important concept to go over. And I want to discuss it today. I want to give you some ideas and some tips that can really help, that can fast track your results. And if you get value out of this lesson, I want you to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, notify, turn on your notifications so you can be updated on all the latest releases of our channel, from our channel. Let's get into this lesson on grip pressure right now. The epidemic that's killing players is they're squeezing too tight, the death grip. And what happens, it's very simple. Players want to control the ball. They, they don't want to lose control and they're afraid. They're afraid of losing. They're afraid of missing. And this instinct, this instinctive desire to control things, to make the ball, to keep things close to the vest, that causes grip tightness. When we're nervous and we want to win and we care too much, we tense up. It's a, it's a protection mechanism. And so if we were to survey 100 players, I would say that 99 players out of 100, maybe, maybe 100, grip it too tight compared to gripping too loose. Whenever I see a player swing and the racket fall, comes out of their hand, I'm, la I'm smiling, I'm happy. I'm like, whoa, that's a loose hand, nice going. When I played on the tour and I got pretty sweaty when I was serving, uh, there were times that the racket actually flew out of my hand because my, my hand was so sweaty and my hand was so loose. And so you wanna make sure that you have a loose hand. So let's get back to the baseline. We'll talk about some of these concepts right now. Now, the first thing that I wanna cover is your grip because with the grip, you need to make sure that you have a grip that allows you to release tension and to have less grip pressure. And if you're holding the racket like this with your index finger together, that's a big problem. You wanna make sure that that index finger, we call it the trigger finger, is spread. Some people hold the racket and they actually fasten the thumb over the middle thing, finger. And what you want to do is you want to spread that index finger and have the thumb over the middle finger like this. If you're doing that, now you can start to use the hand appropriately. Now you can let the hand and the racket do the talking. As soon as you go to this grip, you're going to be stiff. And if you're doing this on the backhand, you're going to be stiff as well. So I recommend that you spread that index finger and you get this hand angled on the racket so that you can feel looser and you can let the wrist and the hand play for you, let it work for you. Now let's step back at the baseline and let's talk a little bit more about this. So let's go deeper onto how you can understand grip pressure, especially on the forehand side. So when, when you're making contact with the ball, you're naturally going to tense up. It's going to be very rare that your hand is so loose that the racket is just loose and flimsy in your hand when you make contact. You're going to naturally brace a little bit or, or grip a little bit when you make contact. And you want to have a little bit of pressure on the forehand side, even the backhand side. But from my experience, players are gripping too tight to begin with. So they're starting with the racket too tight. And then if they're too tight and then they go to contact, they grip even tighter. So they're too tight at contact. And then when they finish, they're still gripping too tight. So I've got some secrets and I've got some ways that can really help you understand how to release that grip pressure. And on a scale of one to 10, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. What do you think the appropriate grip pressure should be on the forehand? One would be super loose, almost falling out of your hand. 10 would be death grip tight. And I'll tell you what I think that number is at the end of this video, but go ahead and leave that comment below and let us know what number you think it is. So. When you make your first move on the forehand, the whole idea behind making a first move is to use your offhand. So I, if I'm in a ready position like this, I should be able to move my offhand like this and not even touch the racket with my dominant hand. 
So this can show you that, oh, I don't really need any grip pressure when I move to this first move position. Of course, you're gonna be holding the racket when you move it to that position. But if you can get into the habit of feeling like this hand, this off hand is pulling across and there's hardly any pressure this is where more of the pressure is, it's just sitting in your off hand. Then you can start to learn that, hey, I don't really have to grip the racket tight at all. You're gonna use the off hand to get into that first move and that will make you aware of having a loose hand. Now, when you go to, when you go to separate, of course, you're gonna to have to be a little firmer to hold the racket. But you can see, you should be able to kind of wobble the racket, you should be able to wiggle the fingers and feel that there's not a lot of tension in the hand. Now, I don't tell people what to do with their grip pressure at contact because I feel it gets them to think too much. What I do do is I focus on what happens at the end. And you might have seen this in previous videos before, but at the end of the swing, I have people take the racket out of the hand. Now, what does this do? It simply makes you aware of being super loose. So this would be a zero, right? There's no tension. Most people are too tight at the end. So if you can be at a zero at the end of the swing, you probably are going to start learning the proper grip pressure because imagine if you're really tight with your hand here and then you get to the end and then you relax, you're gonna notice a huge difference. You really shouldn't notice a big difference. Your hand should be pretty loose and then you can just take the racket out of the hand and get to a zero. So it's gotta feel effortless. One of the biggest mistakes I made as a player is I gripped the racket too tight thinking that's where my power would come from. So I'd watch the pros on TV. I'd watch Nadal and others and I would think, oh my gosh, they're grimacing and there's so much tension, you know, when you see those still shots and their muscles are bulging. But the, that's actually a misnomer. That's a mistake. Players are being fooled thinking, oh my gosh, they're gripping so tight. No, their hand is really loose the rest of their muscles might be firing at that split second, but their hand is really loose when they swing. The looser you can be, the better. The, the more you can take tension out, the better. If you're playing golf, if you can be relaxed with your hands, you can just drive that ball super far without a lot of effort. So what's that number? Do you write that number down? For me, the number is three. I feel like I'm holding the racket at a three, a three out of 10. I feel, I'll come to you here, <clears throat> I, feel, uh, I feel some pressure in the pinky, although you can even lift the pinky. I feel a little bit of pressure in the heel pad. I do not feel any pressure in the palm. So a lot of players are squeezing so tight that they're gonna feel pressure in the palm. I feel some space, I feel some space in here. So the pressure is, is, is this point here on my thumb and this point index finger, a little bit on the pinky, a little bit of the heel pad, but I'm not squeezing so tight where the palm is against the grip. It's, it's, it's loose. It's loose and it's relaxed. And so what you can practice is not only that first move where you just put the racket here and there's no, there's no hand on the racket, but probably more importantly is taking the racket out of the hand. And the modified version of that would be at the end, wiggling the fingers. So you're holding it here and you're wiggling the fingers. This is one reason why I love catching the racket because when you catch the racket, you actually take tension out of the hand. There's a lot of benefits to that. So you catch it on the throat and you just relax your hand like this. The same thing holds true on the backhand side. If I swing on the backhand, my, I, my backhand was worse than my forehand, so I had a tendency to grip tighter. The, the shot that you're less conf, confident in, the one you're most scared to miss, which that was my backhand, that's the side you're gonna grip tighter on. So if you're, you're gripping tight on your serve because you're tight about your second serve, you'll notice that. So on the backhand side, when you're done swinging, I like to relax the fingers, all of them. No tension, no tension left. What about a one-handed backhand? When I'm done at the end, I could still, I could still wiggle my fingers at the end. That, that fi wiggling the fingers is huge. How about serving? If you're too tight on the serve at the very end, you could take it out and put it in the opposite hand. All this is designed to do is give you awareness. Did I grip too tight on that swing? And if you get to the end of a forehand and you're like, oh my gosh, I gripped too tight, the next time you can do this. 
And then that might remind you, oh, I need to be a little more relaxed at the contact point. So I really don't want you to fixate on your, on your grip tightness at contact. I want you to fixate on how tight you are at the end of the swing so that it will remind you to be looser the next time around. I want you to focus on your first move and seeing if you can have less pressure in your hand. On your backhand side, you make a move with your backhand side, look, I don't even have to have this hand on the racket. Two hand, two-hander, let's just, we can wiggle the fingers a little bit, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the fingers. Let's take the tension out of play before the swing and after the swing and let's trust that during the swing things are going to get better. So there was a lot of nuggets in this lesson and I hope you enjoyed it. My goal again is to help you accelerate your result and if this grip, grip pressure tip can help you, I am happy for you. Go ahead and leave a comment below or a question. Smash that like button. We need more smashes so the word can get out about what we're doing here. We're going deep into tennis technique and instruction and understanding the game and so much more. Click the link below, there's a, there's a description below or somewhere in this video to get, to get access, full access, absolutely free to our free membership. We've got several lessons in there, 21 lessons in fact, no credit card required. Just click the link below or somewhere in this video. We're gonna help you accelerate your results. I'd love to have you go on that journey to just taking your tennis all the way to the next level. Thanks for your time today. We'll see you at the next lesson.